Hi friends, and welcome to episode 21 of my Sea Ice Challenge series. I'm Icon, and today, well, what will happen today? We're right in front of the next winter, which is a little bit concerning to me, to say the least. And we're stacked up with money like crazy. I got lots of different pieces of clothing, I got lots of different pieces of leftovers, <laughs> and we also got enough food to sustain ourselves easily. In the hydroponic banks, we're right now growing a large batch of smoke leaf plants. And I am right now just hoping for a new trade ship coming in as soon as possible because I feel like we really, really need to invest something in the near future. Sadly, I can't process any of these materials here because I have not enough material left to install myself a biofuel refinery and the other idea we were following was to pro process the meat into packaged survival meals but sadly bishop's cooking skill is far far away from that he will need two more levels before he can take that and that's also a reason why i started to come up with the smoke leaf plan because preparing drugs in the game also teaches you cooking so therefore I think we are in a good way apart from that there's not really much we can do for now the fights are getting more fear are getting fiercer and fiercer luckily I am pretty well armed we got a salt rifle available and a charge rifle the one we started with there's even a flak jacket now available to our disposal to our dispose yeah whatever <laughs> you understand me and therefore I feel like we, we should be able to tackle down a lot of attacks but at the same time I am quite angsty about the future of our colony because you know I am short on resources permanently and therefore attacks are always something to be worried about. So let's check out if there's anything on the map I have forgotten to pick up. There's still that tasty silver meteorite here, but I don't dare to. Lissa needing help. So here we have a hosting quest. Well, I don't want to take that only because the rewards are that bad. Hosting somebody for 10 days, well, it's only 10 days and, well, we got enough food. We would be able to do that, but just like with the uh, cats the other episode, a pain stopper is pretty cool and, and all, but it's not, not anything I need right now. With this scenario, I really try to stick to the items and to the materials I really need. And I try to avoid things wherever I can, which I don't really need. So, sadly gotta say no to that one. Aw, look at Julian and Bishop playing hoops, uh, playing horseshoes together. Dang, language is today not my strong su uh, suite, I guess. <laughs> Okay, but that's that's just fine. Hay fever can do. So that's the last prestige rope we can craft right now. Then we're all out of funky leather. Let's see. But the negative moodlets are all expiring already, so... We can prepare new enemies tomorrow. But I don't think I'll need to, because there's enough work to be done in the on the smoke leaf plantation now i still got 30 marble blocks left so let's build ourselves at least a little marble stool in front of this uh, crafting spot might be not the best and uh, most comfy situation but it's still a lot better than sitting on the ground i'd say all right the reefer plants are ready Then let's smack down a harvest order, and there we go. So this will bring Bishop to a lot of new work, and I don't want Julian to do that. So we're going to assign this one directly to Bishop, 
because there's simply no gain for us if Julian does that. I want to pump the cooking skill all onto one character, so we're able to focus ourselves well there. Because the good thing about packaged survival meals is you can sell them, and most trade caravans actually buy that stuff. Therefore, I'm really, really interested in that. And we're not that far away from cooking eight anyways. There's just a couple of thousand XP. Level seven is pretty close right now, so I'm very happy to be there. Considering that Bishop had, I think, stat values of zero and one in cooking and plants, something like that when we started out. He learned a lot during the last few years. He did. So winter is now back, uh, back upon us and the Elobo Coalition tribes people are attacking us one more time. So with a chilling 95 degree negative outside, they are going to die rather quickly. Let's see, gear-wise, I'm pretty sure they are not equipped well enough to face these temperatures. No, not at all. So, let's get outside there. The bad news is Julian is also not really insulated well enough for this kind of fight, so I really gotta take this seriously. So, also realizing that I do want to have some sort of defense line, some sand sacks or something like that would be really good. There we go. We're going to burden everybody who's going closer and spreading my fire out. This is not something I usually don't do, but I really want the archer person to go down first because these guys are really annoying once they are allowed to go into cover. So Maro, do we want to take down Maro? Yes we want to, simply because Maro is carrying steel gear and everybody who's carrying something made out of steel is not allowed to get away from here. We have to restock our turret barrels with something after all, you know? That doesn't come for free. Okay, so, Troke. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to strip those fellas once they're dead. Or not, I don't care. Okay, there we go. So, Julian gains now 12 units of steel out of that. And here, each point of durability is once is half a unit of steel. So that's five steel to restock, and these 16 are eight steel to restock. That's 13 steel together. Makes exactly the amount we, we plundered there. So good job, guys. We did well. Teoski's collection of goodies. Oh yeah, there's another item stash. Only a couple of days away. Brilliant. It's going to be no problem whatsoever to get together that. No, no. Not at all. All right, bitch rolling up the reefers. I like that. And we're start to, starting to bury those poor sods there. All right. So I'm going to edit the smoke leaf joints for recreational use away because this stuff is way too valuable to take and well combined with hypothermia the stu uh, smoke leaf can easily kill you outside but the main intention here this is the reefers are meant for sale and not for consumption I will use them in emergency cases of course so if there's anything happening where my folks are really in need for some some good times i definitely don't want to not gonna say no to that but you know what i mean all right we gained more steel than we expended so that's really good it's 
rearm those turrets. I really would like to have more turrets for sure, but one thing at a time. Meanwhile, we're rolling up the reefers and skilling up the cooking with that. I would love to have a, what's it called again? A drug facility bench, but that's just not happening. Oh, look at that. We finally got ourselves a trading ship. All right, Bishop. Terrifying Reindeer Corporation. Okay, I'm not scared. I'm merely giggling. Okay, so sadly there's almost nothing we can buy from an exotic goods trader with that uh, at that point. Although, well, they do sell plus steel, which is really, really valuable. Well, I'll do this. Let's buy as much plus steel as we can afford. Merely 80 units, but that's okay. We will need plus steel later down the road. Soon as we want to buy, uh, build a spaceship, we won't be able to get past plus steel. So rather buy some while we get a chance to. There's most likely no ship showing up in the next few months, so or, well, the next season, I should rather say. One season is somehow something like months, but... Well. And the Nala Federation sends sappers this time. All right, this is really, really, really scary. So let's get out of there. Especially when they send people with grenades, I'm always very scared, honestly. So, Julian. I'm, I'm going to send Julian away. This is one job Bishop has to do alone. With minus 100 degree outside, I don't know how I should be bringing this up without a super risky situation for everybody there. I mean, Bishop is also hypothermic here, so... Let's see. This guy wielding a bolt action rifle is making me a little bit nervous here. Alright, we got a hole in our wall. Okay, that guy is downed. Good. So, next step to success. They got no more explosives, so. We're going to go inside. Bishop needs to get rid of this hypothermia a little bit. These guys should be growing more and more hypothermic here themselves, so... Wait a sec, Julian, why can't I? Oh, yeah, of course. So... What is this guy? You're a sapper. You're not supposed to shoot that good. Alright. Never mind. Let's send Julian inside and hope that he doesn't die here. <laughs> Yo, Bishop, go inside. All right, I'll allow. What the? Oh, seriously? Losing an entire arm to a rifle? Realism, please. Sometimes I hate this game for stuff like that, honestly. Because, you know, you, you can tell me a lot, but nobody loses his arm via random shots. Even if you hit the, ar the arm several times, it doesn't go off that easily. But okay, room world logic, I'm done, uh, I'm done hating it right now, so <laughs> let's just accept it. Good reason to research prosthetics, uh, or use prosthetics. So we would need a machining table for that, nevertheless. Mm, too bad. The real annoying part about that is now Julian's work speed is reduced by a lot. He actually shouldn't be working outside anymore with that kind of... Uh, 
for that kind of situation there. Manipulation stat, I wanted to say. All right. Okay. Sure, then you're able to lose an arm via gunshots. Okay. I mean, it's not like that I haven't seen this several times before in this game. It's just... Uh, I mean, he got hit three times and every single shot has ha hit the same body part. That's highly unlikely. I haven't seen such things for I don't know how long. Okay, and the worst part right now is that we will need to fix that hole somehow. So I'm going to patch that for now with steel. No, no, not marble. It's exactly what we have already. Okay. Luckily, a lost arm doesn't really hurt your ability to to research. No, it doesn't hurt your ability to research at all. So it's not that horrible. The only thing I really want to have now is a trade caravan, which gives me finally so enough steel to build myself a. A, what's it called again? A, a machining table so we can create ourselves some prosthetics because that situation right now is outrageous. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that I'll be that lucky to acquire a bionic arm for him, but you know. Also, once the next batch of smoke leaf is done, I need to. Err. Uh, I need to fetch myself new food. That's what I wanted to say. Those nutrimines just uh, confused me. I mean, the nutrimines sure are a really, really nice piece of loot in that situation. I'm very happy about those. All right, what does Bishop do? Oh, hauling them in. All right. My supplies of steel are running a little bit low right now. But it's not that horrible. To be fair, I'm super happy that we didn't lose anybody to frag grenades at the at this fight. Oh yeah, we got the advanced fabrications now. Nice. So Starflight Basics. The biggest issue here for us will be acquiring an AI core, because I really got no clue how the heck I'm supposed to acquire an AI core under these circumstances, but, well, in the worst case, I think sometimes traders sell them, but I'm actually not entirely sure. A comment would be very, very welcome how to acquire a, a, an AI core under these circumstances. Because I do know that you will receive a quest to fetch one from an outside source. But, well, I mean, we could go adventuring and attack some enemies outside in the summer. That's 15 days of traveling time where the temperatures outside won't be killing us outright. It's not. It's not nothing, you know. 15 days are a long time. So in the worst case, I have to time my adventures like that, obviously. Okay, so how's Bishop's cooking? Hit level seven, obviously, but well, not much beyond that. Alrighty, so I'll fast forward to the next event now. And somebody from the Broken Empire fell from the sky. By now, I really like to try and uh, rescue these people more often because, you know, it gives me free goodwill and therefore I feel like it's a good thing to do. She has 16 hours to live, well now 15 hours, and she came with a steel slack chunk too, so I'm more than happy about that. So, here we go. 
Bishop, you're not tending to anybody before you have eaten yourself something. You have eaten for yourself because he was ravenously hungry. Boo. Stop, 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 stop. Medicine is nothing we're giving away to strangers. No, no, no. It's bad enough that I am already feeding her with my valuable resources. We're not giving her any of uh, any of our valuable medicines now, too. It's really important that I keep her inside here before... Um, keep her inside here until she's completely healed, because if we go too early, she's not going to reach the end of the map alive. Her installation is really not that good, and therefore we have to patch her up completely. All right. I just hope that I'll be able to find a trade ship soon that will sell me some steel. That's really my big hope there. And let's check out how's the relationship with a broken empire. That's going to be a plus 10. In the long run, allying with these people would be a great thing because we're able to call reinforcements in case of um, a really difficult fight when people are allied to us. Also, we can summon trade caravans later. So bringing up some goodwill with the neighbors is actually something we should now focus more and more into. Because sadly, in this scenario, I have no options, no real option to send my allies transport pots or anything to to make them friends with me. This Iskra guy though, he's just going to die. I'm sorry about you, man. Rip. Paralytic Abasia is something I can't really respect here or anything, you know. I'm going to bury that fella and he should be happy that we're actually respecting that enough. The respect will be over once we do our thing. We we always do! Julian, you pick up that gun. God. I'll put that into the snow. <laughs> That's, uh, these things, you know. All right. Winter this year is especially brutal. Poor old Julian is working really slow by uh, right now because of his lacking arm. I really hope that we're going to be able to help him out as soon as possible. Wow, it's so cold that he's actually, yeah, dropping his gun on his way home. Dang. So I'm going to re lower Julian's priority for hauling now until the winter is over because it's way too brutal here to, to ignore that. I mean, the fact that he grows hypothermic enough by crossing only 50% of the map to lo lose his gun before he makes it back home is speaking for itself, you know. Alrighty, how's my food stocks coming up? We got 234, okay. I mean, we got endless amounts of food basically, but I want to process that into money at this point. At this point, I really want to focus more and more into money gaming, because that's um, really what we got to do at this point but yeah it's not that easy it's not that easy for sure at least we already got 59 smoke leafers so that's at least some kind of start all right i have a hard time pronouncing these names but overall we're we're performing quite good the only thing that really keeps making me a tad bit nervous is my 
endless lack of steel, but that's another story. All right, let's butcher that guy named Pig. So, prestige rope number, I don't know, three? No, five. Oh dear. Worst part about that, Julian is now not really eligible anymore to be my top-notch crafter because with the locking arm his manipulation skill is just too slow and therefore I don't want to have him on this job prioritized anymore. So let's see, is she actually able to leave the map without breaking down? I highly doubt it. Why is she that slow? Like, seriously? Moving 35%? Yeah. Rip. Devil Strand and Steel Slack Chunks. Let's hope the faction doesn't hate me for letting her die here. Because I really don't want to try it again. <laughs> Honestly. I tried, okay? If you're not able to escape this map and you're not willing to wait another time, to uh, wait more time, I can't help you. So Nala Federation people are attacking from two sides. That's luckily only one attacker from one side and two attackers from the other side. Attackers also come with mollies, so I try to, uh, I'll try to take down the pistol dude or he can get close, and the other folks... Well, let's put Julian inside so he doesn't grow too hypothermic. It's minus 80 degrees out there anyways, so... Let's burden that guy once more. But only after taking a salvo at him. Alright. And let's go there. I wasn't really able to do too much against these fellas, but that's okay. So let's see. Let's retreat a tad bit. And take down that Zubala person. Spread some stuns. We really gotta take down that Molotov person because honestly if this guy is taking a is getting a chance to toss that stuff at us we're in deep deep trouble. <laughs> okay but we got that. Just a Seriously? A scar from one shot? No, he has that scar for a longer time. I'm not... Uh, I remember that scar. Ooh, a sin threat parka, though. We're, we're going to take that. That's one of the most ideal materials for for a parka to have, and I'm pretty sure that this will be extremely good. I also acquired a lot of components for some odd reason. Sure thing, buddy. Okay, so Julian's insulation is now at minus 54 degree. That's a lot better compared to where we started, and me very happy. Also, a machine pistol ain't the worst weapon either. Let's make sure good old Bishop gets his treatment. Yeah, whatever. Julian's medical skill is horrible, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's only a three. But I want to train him whenever the possibility is there. Okay, so let's butcher some 
but let's bury this Alo person. I don't want to overstack here. Oh, whoops. He's now at a minus four. I didn't, I didn't mean to, man. And there's yet another transport pod crash that I didn't uh, even notice. Well, okay. <sighs> Let's not haul stuff from the outside world and take in that auto pistol. And let's refine some things, aka's destroy tainted gear and such things. Alrighty, so the harvest is upon us, and that's the end of today's episode. I think we made a great piece of progress today, even though the trader wasn't here to buy all the materials from me. I feel like this is still a really, really huge step forward right now that we acquired so many materials. We will gain a lot of money out of the leftovers from the raiders as soon as we're there. And at the same time, I, I feel like very, very sad about the Julian's loss, but well, he'll be just fine. I don't know how the heck he is shooting with a rifle with just one arm now, but he just is fine. Thanks so much for watching, drop me a comment down below, leave a thumbs up for the algorithm if you like my kind of work, It'll come, your help will go a long time. Also feel free to subscribe, turn on those notifications, it really does help me a ton. And if you don't, I don't mind either, I just hope you had a great time and come back soon. See you there, bye bye!